All right, so let's continue where we left off. So remember what we were doing is learning how to solve linear equations in one variable, okay? And so we're just doing kind of the basic ones. So in the last video, we looked at the general process, and I told you that you really needed to think about how whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other, and how you decide what to do depends on what operations what has been done to x for instance in this example we've multiplied by 2 and added 5 so we have to undo adding 5 and multiplying by 2 okay so we're continuing working through some examples on that so the ones we've done so far have been problems where just some number was added or subtracted to the variable okay now what we're working on now comes from section 2.2 2. And in 2, 2, what you're dealing with are, let me write that a little neater, are problems where something's been multiplied or divided, okay, to the variable. And you're trying to undo that. So, for instance, on this first problem, 15 times n, 15n, 15 times n equals 75. Don't forget, that's an understood times in between. And then you got to think about, well, multiplying and dividing are opposites of one another. Remember our PEMDAS and how we circled the M and the D? They're pretty much equal operations. They're just inverses. And we circled the A and the S because addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Okay, so um, here we have 15 times N. We're trying to undo multiplying by 15. So what we're going to do is divide by 15. Okay, and if we divide by 15 on one side, we're going to divide by 15 on the other. So those are those two dot guidelines coming into play. Now notice on this one, we divided by positive 15. We didn't do the opposite because think about what we're trying to make happen. We want this to turn out to be 1 so that we have 1n, which would just be n. So that that's, goes back to that identity property for multiplication. On the earlier problems, let's look just over here for a second. When I got to the point where I had r minus 4 equals 3, I added 4 to undo the subtracting 4. My goal there was to make that turn out to be 0. And I didn't, I didn't write it, but, but that, that's because r plus 0 would just be r. So one of the issues early on that you have to watch out about is here we do want these to be opposites because we're adding and we're trying to make a zero happen. Here we're trying to do the inverse operation. So we want to divide and the reason we want to divide by 15 is because we want to turn that into one, the identity element for multiplication, so that one times n will just be n. All right, and then 15 divided into 75, you just do that on your calculator, and you find out that n would be 5. And I really want you doing that. I don't want you guessing and checking to find the answer, okay? Now, here's one where the variable is on the right-hand side. That can be just conceptually more difficult. Feel free to move it so that the x thing with the x is on the left. If two things are equal, it doesn't matter which side of the equal sign you put them on. All right, now this is times in between the negative 2 and the x. I'm trying to undo the multiplying. That's why I'm going to divide. And I don't want to divide by 2 because if I did, I'd have a negative 1 left. I want to divide by negative 2. See how I want to divide by the, the same exact number? So that becomes 1. So it's not the same situation as is in the previous case. There we were adding and subtracting stuff. So we're trying to turn it into a zero because zero is the identity element when you're adding. Here we're trying to turn it into a one. That's really one right there, okay? So we wind up with one x. And over here, when we divide by negative two, we get a negative five. So x would be negative five, okay? And I'm not really doing the check step on this. I'm just doing the, the first three, oops. Move that too quick. All right, so let's continue. Here's another one, just with different signs happening. Here I have negative 10 times a. Trying to undo that. That's You focus on where the variable is. That's what your goal is, to get that by itself. So I need to get rid of the negative 10. 
All right. And that just reminds me, let me back up a minute. That's the problem when the variable is on the right is sometimes people think they should divide by 10 because they're just used to doing that. But you see how that doesn't work on, that doesn't get the variable by itself. Okay. So that's, that's the problem with the variable when it's on the right hand side is sometimes you jump in and think, oh, I'm just going to divide by 10. But then you're just messing up the side where the variable is. This is what you're trying to get by itself. Okay. So that's why we didn't do that. We could have left it the way it was and just divided by negative two if we had wanted. If that, if you get that idea that you're trying to get the x by itself, otherwise you might, you might like this rearranging it so the variable is on the left and then work to get that variable by itself. Okay. All right. So now back to this one. So here I'm dividing by negative ten. And I want it to be negative 10, not positive. So this is 1, not negative 1. And if I do that to one side, i got to do that to the other. And so I wind up with 1a equaling. And this turns out, and it's okay if it does, turns out to not be a whole number. So I need to simplify that. So I'm going to divide by 2. And I'm going to get 12 over 5. Typically, they'll want it as a fraction in simplest form. If you had divided on your calculator, you might have gotten 2.4, which is exactly the same as 12 over 5, 12 divided by 5. So you have to pay attention to what form they want it in, if, if it's okay to be in a decimal. Normally, it's an okay thing to do as long as you're not rounding, as long as it's still exactly equal. But I will say most of the problems are going to ask for it to be a fraction in simplest form. And not a mixed number either. You want it to be 12 over 5. Okay. All right. Now I wanted to do the next one because here, this is really x. This is really x divided by 5, isn't it? Okay. So to undo division, I could multiply. And if I multiply by 5 on one side, I got to do that on the other. And see, the reason this works so good is 5 over 5 is going to be 1x or x. And we get x equals negative 35, and we're done. Okay. All right. Um, now, I'm going to do this next problem in two different ways. Okay, right now, I want you to realize that negative 2 thirds is a perfectly acceptable number as negative 10. It's just a fraction. So you could do it just like you did the problem above it. So if you had negative 2 thirds t equals negative 12. There's no reason why you couldn't just divide by negative 2 thirds and use your calculator to do that. Type in negative 12 divided by and then type in the fraction negative 2 thirds. That will give you t and you'll have a little work to do. If I did it by hand dividing fractions, I'd have a little work to do and I'd have to keep going for a while, right? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and suggest you approach this a different way. There's like a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, you'll probably see them have you multiply by the reciprocal to make that be a one. Here's what I'm gonna propose we do right from here. You can take that three, we're just gonna turn this into two steps. And as long as you do the same thing to both sides, you can do it. So if I multiply the left side by 3 and the right side by 3, that should be okay. All right, so let me emphasize what I'm doing here. So one way to do things is to just approach this problem just like you did the one above it and divide both sides by negative 2 thirds and just type in negative 12 divided by negative 2 thirds on your calculator and get your answer that way. Okay, that's perfectly fine. All right, but one thing that works really well, I use it all the time, is that if I have that, what I, I do sometimes is just clear the fraction. Because one of the guidelines says if you multiply one side by something, if you do something to one side, as long as you do the same thing to the other, you should be okay. So I noticed that 3 that was in a denominator, and I thought, well, let's multiply by 3. But if I multiply by 3 over here, then I've got to do the same thing on this side. See, here's what that does. Isn't 3 divided by 3 going to be 1? So you're left with negative 2t on the left side. And on the right, we get a negative 36. 
And so I'll, I'll a lot of times on one like this, just do it in two steps. Get rid of the three first, then come in and divide by negative two so that you get one T or T equals 18. Okay, that's positive 18. Okay, so multiply by the denominator, knocks out the denominator, then get rid of the negative two that you had by, um, those weren't equal signs, right there. Then multiply, I mean, multiply by three and that cancels out the threes. And then when you get to the negative two equaling negative 36, just divide both sides by the negative two. And then one T or T equals positive 18. Okay. All right, just a couple more on this. Sometimes you'll have a situation like this happen, especially when you have a more complicated problem. It sometimes gets down to this point. Remember how we can slip that understood one in there because one times A is still A. That's the identity property of multiplication. And then think about how you've got a negative one now in front of the A that you need to get rid of. So just divide by it. So this would be one A and a negative nine divided by a negative one would be positive nine. So the opposite of something has to equal the opposite of nine, then A would have to be nine. Okay, so nine would be your answer on that one. All right, and then sometimes you have to simplify <coughs> an, a side of an equation first, like here, I need to put the four R minus nine R together and get negative five R and then I have a situation where I have multiplication going on. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5 so that I get 1R or R, and it would equal negative 4. Okay. So those problems right there, those deal with um, just when you basically have a number being multiplied, like, like on the negative 10A equal negative 24, or a, multiply, a, a number being divided into the variable. So you got multiplication or division going on. Okay. Let me go ahead and post.